Yes, I'm Zanzi. Welcome back to Feel Good Breakfast Show. It's Health Tuesday, but more importantly, today is a big day for Matrix. Mm -hmm. Oh, because the results are coming through. Yes, we're anticipating the 2023 Matrix results this week. And yeah, the nerves are definitely high. But don't worry, we've got you covered. We've got some great advice for you, especially if the results don't go your way. And we're going to be joined by educational psychologist Dr. Sharon Aitken and alongside Luther van Zeil, a counsellor. And they're going to be discussing and supporting students through these potentially disappointing times, yep. especially if the results did not go your way. So firstly, good morning. How are we doing? Number one. <laughs> no no, 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 It's early in the morning. Uh, yes, that's fine. Don't worry. I mean, with Matrix, they're also nervy at the moment, and we, we, we brought you in to, to help. Mm -hmm. And I think, Lita, I want to start with you as a counsellor. You, I mean, I think that we've both experienced this, you've experienced it, you know, when you get the results coming through, you're not sure what they're going to be. You're not sure if you're going to, it used to pop up in the newspaper as well, I remember this, yes. right? Yes, search for and your name. Yes, yeah. so you couldn't hide, yeah. because usually you could hide with the other reports throughout the year, <laughs> yes. but you can't hide with this one. Mm. And now let's just say that the results weren't what you wanted them to be. Mm -hmm. Other people are successful around you. There's laughter and people are going to go out like, are we going to party tonight? And, Supposed to be and celebrating, now, yeah. And, and this is a social pressure, isn't it? When people are successful around you, but you haven't received the results that you've wanted. Mm -hmm. In that scenario, let's start straight up. How would you deal with a situation as a matric? If you were to chat to them directly, mm -hmm. how do you interpret and deal and then act to create a solution? Well, so I think it's important to understand what happens when you feel disappointed, right? Yeah. So you have this conception of this idea of what your results are going to be. Yeah. Right? And then reality comes and it's like completely different, mm. right? Yeah. And so what happens there is, is this whole idea that you had just kind of falls flat. And so what often happens is you might start to doubt your future, right? Because you have this idea of, okay, well, this is what my future is going to be, you know, and, and all of a sudden now because my, my uh, conception about, you know, yes. what I thought my results are going to be is wrong, that just turns into this whole mess of self-doubt. Uh, you could experience shame as well, thinking yeah. that just because your results are not good, this means that you as a person, you are not good enough, mm. right? So that's sort of the things we're dealing with. And the other thing as well is frustration, you know, that comes up. Because frustration happens when you, you're on your way to a desired outcome yeah. and you just get blocked. So basically what you would do is, you know, try and help, you know, the matric people to understand yeah. that it's not them as a person, right? So don't personalize it. That's very important. And then you would kind of want to... Um, I almost want to say bolster their you know, steam and say, well, look, this is just a part of a process, right? It's just a step in the process. And that's kind of how you would go about that. Yeah. Oh, okay, I love that, man. Powerful, Lita, thank yeah. you so much. Separating. Michelle, you can possibly add to that because I would imagine that it's pretty important to ensure that the understanding for both the parents and the kid is that this is not necessarily the end of your educational mm. journey. This is not the end of the road, right? Oh, There's... Yeah. Yes, it might feel like your life has come to an end, the ambition and the world that you wanted to change suddenly can't anymore, but there's more to life than just this result, right? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. I mean, if you are unhappy with your result, there's so many different things that you can do. I mean, w one of the things that I've found that learners are not aware of is that you can actually reset some of those exams. Okay. Yeah, so it's, it's not the end of the world. All right. You just sign up with some some institution yes. and the following year you can actually you just go again or this year rather you can actually go again and yeah okay. knock it out the ballpark then there's all sorts of different forms of learning like yeah. experiential learning all of those things can actually build towards your future career path so <laughs> absolutely not the end nice i like that That's comforting <laughs> so as Lita was saying around you know the the frustration that happens along the way uh, how would you go about trying to reframe a different vocational path for a matric? You know, heading onto a path. Yes, they wanted to do the whole university thing with the choice. Immediately. All right, they were like, <laughs> yes, let's go. And they pictured the movies and like, I'm going to get a, like a college jacket. <laughs> and now that's not going to happen anymore. So how do you usher in a new path? And do you know, saying to this matriculant that it doesn't mean that you are diverging too, too much. I mean, you are choosing a path that is now, you know, sort of more suited to you at this stage in your life. I mean, how would you, you sort of broke uh, that conversation? How do you broach it and say, this is how it's going to go for you? It's not a race. It is absolutely mm. not a race. Love that. Take your time. The most important thing is to find your passion in yes. life and to make that happen. 
if that takes you a little bit longer, that's okay. And there are so many different ways that you can do that. You know, you can reset your exams, you can take a structured gap year. So many people are unaware of structured gap years. I yes. mean, they're amazing. You can come out of a structured gap year with approximately 35 little accredited courses wow. that you can add to your CV. Um, you can get work experience, you can job shadow. There are so many positive things that you can do while you are taking your time to find your passion and the way forward. And I personally recommend it for all matrix yeah. that you do not go straight into studying because you actually don't really know what you want to do. And you might blind yourself from finding your actual passion. Exactly. In the end of that. Wow. Lovely. Exactly. Dropping. Thank so you for saying thoughts. that, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> I have a gap year child, so thank you so much. Right. I appreciate yeah. that. Yeah. Listen, this conversation is incredible and it's going to carry on. So I want to say thank you first you for being out and sharing this great yes. insight. But Mzanti, don't go anywhere. We're going to dive into a conversation about how to deal with this and some more practical advice. But first up, we've built ourselves up an app. It's my feel good breakfast show. It's your feel good breakfast show, Expresso here on S3, and we're continuing our discussion about how to handle matric results and what comes next, focusing on those feelings, practical steps, more importantly. And this is for you, the dear student or parent of the student. It's a big moment, and we want to make sure you're prepared. We've got two very talented people on our couch, and this is why we need to continue the conversation. Let's start off with our counselor, Lita van Sale, who is here as well. So uh, I just wanted to ask you about just about considering different options, you know, and actually ushering in a, a bit of a scenario where the matriculant can be part of those options because perhaps you've been forced to do one thing. When I say forced, as in encouraged to, I should use, to do one thing, get your matric and then go study. Mm. But now the same person that has encouraged that, the results have shown a different path. For you as a counselor, how do we handle that situation with care parent to student and student to parent? Mm -hmm. Well, so um, I think the, the first important thing is to look at, when you look at your grades, it's important yeah. to look at how you got that grade, right? Yes. So not just look at, okay, I got 80% for English and 80% for math and you know, yeah. so I must be good at both of those. But rather look at the process, like maybe you had to work really, really hard and it was like struggling to get that 80 for math, okay. but the 80 for English just kind of came easily for you yeah. and you actually enjoyed it, right? So that would, that would mean that you're actually leaning more towards, uh, you know, the linguistics or language side yeah. of it, right? So that's the first part and, and I think um, another important part about that is, is to actually gather as much information about yourself as you can, right? And that's part of that. So you want to try and understand what are your interests? Are you interested in the more practical stuff? Are you really interested in sort of caring for people? Yeah. Like what, is, what are your interests? What does your personality look like as well? That's very important. Uh, you know, are you extroverted or are you introverted? Uh, and there's a bunch of other personality traits. And then the last thing, which I think parents sometimes miss, is you're gonna look at your values as well. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. Do you value problem solving? Or do you value trying to understand things, you know? Or maybe you value caring, right? Yes. So those are three very different occupational paths, right? Yeah. And once you get a, a feeling for that, you know, once you get, get to understand yourself a little bit better, then you actually go and look at the information about all the possible occupations you might be interested in. Yes. And finally, you want to put the two together and see how does it match up, right? And look at the work environment as well. Will my personality fit in here? Is this part of my interests, you know? And then does my grade support that, right? Nice. That sounds like a great project for student and parent to do. Mm -hmm. That sounds really good, a good analysis on on the future in that way, and I think that's, that's great advice. Yeah, look, I love the fact that we're keeping this conversation practical right now, yeah. because literally that is something that is comforting in the same sense. Sha, maybe you can add to the sort of options we might have if we, let's say, don't get that bachelor's pass. Yeah. Maybe it's just a diploma or certificate. Do we have options number one? Are those options equally as good, if not better? And uh, are they, like, I, I think for me, are there any sort of differences between the two that are actually that notable, to be very honest? Yeah. I just want to put it out there. A degree is not the be all and end all of life. Uh -huh. Please, uh -huh. I have friends who do not have de degrees who way out earn me, like way out earn me. So yeah. it just shift that whole mindset. Mm. You know, there is a lot more out there that you can do. Mm. And what I really wanted to, to say is something that people don't think about is actually how few people can actually afford to study and that you can actually study while working. So you could leave matric and you could find a company that actually educates its employees and you can actually 
start work, start earning money, because there's a lot of kids who actually do want to earn money straight away. Yes. And you can get yourself on a really good career path. My sister did that. She went to work for a hotel. She worked to butt off for an entire year. Then she managed to get to a bursary to actually study. Wow. So there's a lot of options out there. It's not just degree, 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 degree. Lord. You can do an apprenticeship. You can yes, do can. lots of different Thank things. Thank you for that. That, that. That's power. But I think just as a, as a last note, as the results come through, you know, there are potential outcomes, of course. How do we ready the individual, the parents, the family, or the structure around them for whatever result may come? Just a little anecdote from each one of you that would be powerful just to kind of take on ahead of the results being received by these uh, students. You want to go first? <laughs> In was in the back, yeah. <laughs> you know what? I would just say, just chill and chill. just go with the flow because what happens is going to happen. Yes. Just give it time to percolate, relax, think about what your next steps are going to be, and just take your time. It will unfold. Yeah, I think part of that is also like we spoke about it earlier. Yes. Is look at it as part of the process, right? All right. So it's not the end; it's part of the process. Mm -hmm. It's an opportunity for you to kind of recalibrate, right, if you were disappointed. And then the second thing, and this is the, the total like, best way to actually manage your stress, if you get a little bit stressed out, is try and get out of your head and try and get into your body, right? Mm. So, you know, and do this routinely, right? So get into the sea, you know, and jump in, call plunges, and work out. All of those things to get you out of this mental spiral yeah, yeah. and right into the moment, right, through your body, right? Well, yeah. Absolutely wow. sage advice. I can't thank you both enough for coming through, especially on a pertinent day like this where everybody's stressing and anxious, but I think that is That's no it. more. Why? Because we've got options. You've got so many things that you can do, no matter what the result, just go with it, flow with yes. it, and make sure that you're present in your decisions. For now, though, it's time to be present in the news headlines, and here's G-Man with the latest.